Waiters of Reddit, what's the most ridiculous order someone's placed and how did you deal with it? Story one, not a waiter, but a cook. Had a lady order her tofu scramble burnt, so I cooked it hard. She sent it back because it wasn't burnt enough, so I cooked it harder. She sent it back again, and the waiter said she really wants it burnt. So I got a wok super hot, put too much oil in, and proceeded to burn the nonsense out of it. My chef came by and lost his cow. I explained it to him, and he watched me burn, just ruin the thing. It was black and smelled like a tire fire. She ate all of it and said we were the only place to get it right. She came back every weekend for it, and we had to train new cooks how to burn the living fudge out of her food for her. I still can't comprehend why she would eat that. Story two. I once had a guy place his order and then say, and give me one of those spaghetti appetizers. I had been working there for a couple months, and we had no pasta dishes whatsoever on the menu. I politely tried to clarify this, but he wasn't having it. He just kept getting more irate. He insisted that he eats here all the time, and he always gets the spaghetti appetizer. Eventually, he gets up from his table, storms over to another one, and points at what he wants on another diner's table. He was pointing at their coleslaw. And yes, as far as he was concerned, I was still the unpleasant person for not knowing what he was talking about. Edit one. Our slaw was a southern-style slaw, where the cabbage is shredded. So the cabbage is in strings, but you would still have to be some sort of weirdo to confuse it with noodles. And a few people have mentioned a Dane Cook bit. I'm not familiar with that joke, but after doing some Googling, it appears that is a joke about messing with staff at a restaurant. This happened in 1994, and the customer was an older, well-dressed guy out to dinner with his wife. I'm positive he wasn't flipping with me. He was just an obnoxious a-hole that expected me to know what his confused mind was talking about. Story three. The strangest request. When I worked for Starbucks, I helped open the first drive through store in the area, so it was a learning process for some customers. A lady orders in the drive through lane an iced venti vanilla latte with 22 sweet and lows. Me, 22 sweet and lows, like 2-2. Customer, sigh yes, 22 sweet and lows. Me, okay, please pull up. Now at the drive through we put the extra milk and sugar in the drinks for the customers. When in a cafe, they would add it on their own. So the person working the bar looks at me like, for real, this lady wants 22 packs of sweet and low in her latte? That's what she said, so that's what we made her. The lady pulls up and pays for her drink. I hand it over and tell her to have a nice day. She stops and says, oh, can I get those sweet and lows now? I just looked at her and said that they were already in her drink. Boy, was she pissed. She wanted us to hand her 22 packs of sweet and low in the drive through so that she could take them home. Story four. Ah, uh, I'm late to this party. But when I worked at a hibachi slash sushi slash Japanese place, this family came in with an adult son who had some kind of mental disability and only wanted to eat breakfast food. The mom asked if we had bread. We didn't. She went to the gas station next door and bought bread and came back and asked me to toast it. Now, there is no toaster in the restaurant, and I had to explain to the 100% Chinese, barely English-speaking kitchen to cook three eggs rare on one side, sunny side up, and bread medium rare, toast. It worked out, and everybody was happy. Chefs were super confused as to why anyone would want that. Story five. Oh, how I miss my old regular. We are not a fine dining establishment. It's a small family-style Italian restaurant. This lovely gray-haired gentleman would call ahead so that we could put a salad bowl in the freezer for him. After that, I would go to his spot at the bar, or the closest one open to it, and set a large dinner napkin down that he placed his salad meal on. I would then place an empty wine glass with a napkin over it, per his request, just in case the dinner napkin didn't specify that the seat was taken. Once he got there, I would go to the back and make his specific salad. Very little lettuce, extra mushroom, extra tomato, extra onion, no shredded cabbage, and no cucumber. That would be after I get him two ice-cold beer glasses for his 70 30th sweet-unsweet tea mixture with an extra glass of ice. He would then attempt to engage in a five, ten-minute conversation about our specials for the evening and how he could alter them. The guy came in between three, six nights a week, and always tipped fairly. He was the kind of nice old guy that would get you and your wife birthday cards because that stuff was important to him. He then moved 45 minutes away, and we never see him anymore. Missed the hell out of that old man, though. Story six. I had a four-top once that one of the gentlemen was ordering and asked for extra onion, and he made extreme emphasis on extra onion. So I go to put the order in, and I have to talk to the chef to make sure he understands extra onion. So when the order comes out, I get a side plate of a cut whole onion. I giggle and take the order to the table. I put the orders of food in front of all the other guests and leave onion man for last. I set his plate of food and extra onion down. He looks up at me and starts laughing. The whole table is now laughing. Do I look like the devil? Apparently, wherever they go, no matter what, he always has to ask for more onion. And this time, my snarky chef nailed it. Story 7. Ten years in the service industry checking in. At the Italian restaurant I worked at as a server-slash-bartender-slash-manager for five years, we had a lot of regular customers come in and had some strange requests. Most were nothing too special, but one guy would come in for 
five days a week, and he would never order anything on the menu unless it was a busy night, and we wouldn't have time to get crazy. On the slower nights, though, he would order things with sauces we didn't normally make, or special dessert concoctions, even though we prepared desserts daily and did not make them to order. The craziest thing he ever ordered, though, was a donut explosion. To be clear, we did not nor know how to make donuts. However, there was a Dunkin' Donuts next to our location, and he sent one of his favorite servers next door to pick up a dozen random donuts. When he came back, the customer told me which ones he wanted on his dessert, and I proceeded to go back into the kitchen and whip up his dessert to his specification. It consisted of two donuts, topped with vanilla ice cream, layered between the brownie cake that was our house specialty, and topped with chambord and a port wine fig sauce that we put on pork chops. This was one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen in a restaurant, but he let me try a bite, and it was flipping amazing. Needless to say, he ordered it a few more times before I left that restaurant. Story 8. Barista here. We had a Narcotics Anonymous convention in town once. I had someone order a 16 ounces cup with as much espresso as would fit. It was something like 18 shots. Cost about 25 bucks. And he downed it at the counter and went, Woo! Another NA guy wanted a 16 Oz cup with half vanilla syrup and half espresso. A lady regularly asks for a cup of regular coffee with a large spoonful of butter stirred in. We do breakfast sandwiches on bagels and croissants, and a businessman with a group of his colleagues had ham slash egg slash cheese, but he wanted it on a chocolate croissant. I think my favorite incident, though, was a lady that wanted a latte with half nonfat and half soy. A triple shot with one regular shot, one decaf shot, and one half calf shot, heated to a specific temperature, double cupped, one Splenda and one equal, stirred into the shots. The works, basically. The guy behind her thought it was as ridiculous as I did, and he loudly asked for a mocha nonsense drink with one-third goat's milk, one-third cashew milk, and one-third giraffe milk, cooled with a chip of ice from a Norwegian glacier and topped with nutmeg and gold flake. Then he said, wait, is your giraffe milk fair trade? Okay, never mind then. I'll just have a cup of coffee. He still comes in. I love that guy. Story nine, had a guy send one of our servers to the kitchen about seven times, which is down the stairs far away from her section, to inquire about the weight of different hamburgers. All of them were the same, yet he insisted she go down and check and would watch to make sure she did. He sends her away to mull it over for a while, and you can see him snickering with his equally douche looking two sons. Finally, the guy decides he wants a 24 ounces grilled burger with nothing else but the patty, no seasoning or anything. Not like some hulking bro trying to get extra protein. Just an old, unpleasant person who wanted to fudge with the poor server. Ate a bite, said he didn't like it, and ordered another burger. Tipped a very solid 0% after telling her, it'd all be worth it. This is why we're all mildly functioning alcoholics. Story 10. A customer ordered a triple grandpa burger. This is a common mistake customers often made with us. A grandpa burger is a triple patty burger, so they often say triple grandpa burger when really they just mean the one three patty burger. But after this one guy, I always clarified that was what they wanted, because this guy actually wanted a nine patty burger. I asked him twice to make sure I wasn't hearing wrong, but no, that's exactly what he wanted. Not only that, he wanted cheese on every single patty. So that's nine five ounces, beef patties, and nine slices of cheese. Plus, you know, condiments and the like. This wasn't even a big guy. Looked fit as a fiddle, handsome, about 25 years old. And he was alone, so it couldn't have been a dare. I guess he was just really flipping hungry. So I had the cook make it. And we stood behind the counter and watched as he ate every single bite. I wasn't even sure how I was supposed to react when he was done. But he seemed quite pleased, thanked us, and left. Never saw that guy again. Story 11. Well, I don't even remember all the specifics, but I once had this old lady come into Olive Garden and order something and literally customize every ingredient. We had one promo entree that contained risotto. She asked me what risotto was and then asked me to switch it out for plain brown rice and squash. Neither of which we had. We made all our sauces in-house, but they weren't made on the spot for each order. She even tried to customize the ingredients in the sauce. And the end of everything, after I ran around trying to make her happy, she complained to management that I was incompetent for not being a magician and changing how a restaurant works. Story 12. Family of four comes into Upscale Pizza Place every Sunday. I've served them every week for a year. Three waters, no ice. One unsweet iced tea with ice. Picture of it on the side, no ice order of whole wheat dough knots. No brushed butter or cheese. Oil on the side. Pizza one. Large. Whole wheat crust, no sauce, pickles, double mahi-mahi, portobello mushrooms, crimini mushrooms, red onions, yellow onions, roasted red peppers, bell peppers, zucchini, spinach, roasted tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, diced tomatoes, basil, rice mozzarella, no butter brushed on crust pizza too, small, whole wheat crust, no sauce, double pickles, scallops, both mushrooms, both peppers, both onions, all three tomatoes, spinach, basil, oregano, rice mozzarella, 
No butter brushing on crust. Well done. Pizza three. Small, cornmeal crust, crushed black beans as sauce, double mahi, double pickles, only criminy mushrooms, eggplant, roasted tomatoes and peppers, no cheese, and no brushing of butter on crust. All four of them with individual sides of oil, garlic powder, and oregano. That's separate. So 12 little sides for the table. They take advantage of the Christmas gift card specials of free $25 for every $100 gift card. They buy $400 in gift cards, getting a free $100. It got a point where, if the veteran pizza cooks and I, server, were working, this family could sit down and not say a word. We'd have their order already going. The only change would be sometimes order beer battered pickles. Story 13. Pregnant woman wanted a peanut butter and pickle blizzard at the DQ I worked at. She brought her own pickles. It is against policy to blend things customers bring in into the blizzard, but they are welcome to stir their own ingredients in. It's my personal policy to not argue with pregnant women. She got her blizzard. Edit. It was our policy not to do that. I'm not sure if it was an actual DQ policy. That location is independently owned. To be fair, as a business, you likely don't want teenagers bringing in candy cookies to be blended up and served to them, no matter how fantastic that may be. LOL. Story 14. I'm not a waiter, but a bartender in a cocktail bar. We work mainly at night. Late afternoon is usually quite slow. So one day, two girls come in, sit down at a table, and start looking at the menus. After three minutes, they come to the counter with their phones and show us some pictures, saying, Hey, our boyfriends are on some exotic island, and they got those cocktails. Could we have something that looks cool, too, so we can send them pics? Now, the bar I work at makes fantastic cocktails with awesome design. Only fresh fruit and loads of it put together in a way you won't believe. The primary reaction of customers when we put the glasses on their tables is, Whoa, well, well, let me take a picture of this. But we decided to take it up a notch. We have flipping watermelons so we could make the cocktail in it, sculpted the thing, and basically planted a jungle on top of it. I even had to run to the beach to get some sand so we could place the watermelon in it so it wouldn't roll over. They sent pics to their boyfriends, who replied, Okay, you win. The smile on the girls' faces, Yeah, it was a slow afternoon. Story 15. I worked at a restaurant fish market type of establishment where we sold raw product but would also prepare the food on the spot. One day I was helping an old Asian lady out and she told me had never had a whole lobster and would love to try one. As she was shopping in the fish market portion, I assumed she wanted it live. So we went over to the lobster tank and she picked the happiest little lobster out there. I asked her if she wanted to pay $16.99 for it alive or $22.99 for us to cook and serve it to her. She decided to take it alive, so I took some time to weigh it out and wrap it up in a takeout box for her to take home. I put it down on the table and walk away. A minute or two later, I hear a commotion and come out to see this little Asian lady with a knife trying to cut off the claw of the lobster. Apparently, she thought that she was supposed to eat this thing live. I cooked it for her. This lady was not eating it sashimi style, but rather trying to fight with a lobster in order to eat it. She clearly had no idea what she was doing. Story 16. I worked for a while in a vegetarian-slash-vegan-friendly buffet restaurant. Now, the great majority of people were actually really nice, not particularly haughty about their diet or anything, but I had two customers that were, let's say, different. The first one came up to me with a plate already filled with various salads that she, being a buffet, had personally selected. She showed me the plate and asked me, Do your salads have any raw ingredients in it? And before I could answer, because I'm pregnant, see? so I can't eat anything raw, while still showing me her plate of definitely raw various veggies and fruit salads. I was so dumbstruck that all I could say was, let me ask the kitchen to make sure. And I actually did, because is salad raw is one of these questions that make you question even the most basic things, such as what a salad is or what hats are. I asked the chef if our salads had raw ingredients in them. He looked at me and said, is she familiar with the concept of salad? We ended up switching her plate for another one because, yes, our salads had raw ingredients in them. However, all in all, she was really nice about it and didn't mind waiting a bit more for us to fix her plate. The second one was, however, a bit more rude. She came up to me and told me that she could only eat raw, vegan stuff. I thus directed her to the salad buffet because, hey, now I was pretty sure they were made of raw ingredients. And that's when she scowled at me and said, uh, yeah, but I'm getting a bit tired of salads, you know? You tremendous twat. You bestow upon other people the task of finding you food that fits your incredibly narrow criteria, and then you bad person that it's a tad unoriginal. She later complained that we didn't didn't have any raw cake. The cake was already vegan, mind you, but yeah, we had baked it. This is the only time I really thought, you are an insult to natural selection. Story 17. Three years of serving here. Currently working at a Thai bistro that offers a ton of options for vegans, vegetarians, diabetics, or anyone with food allergies. I could go on about strange or complicated orders. However, this one will always make me chuckle. While working at Cheddar's, a casual American-style restaurant, two very rude and very overweight women are sat in my section. 
they order two ice waters with a ton of lemons. I've seen or heard of other people who order this quite a bit who just make lemonade at the table, so it wasn't too unusual, but still deserved an odd look. But once they ordered their food, they also ordered two cups of boiling water. I'm a little confused, but bring them two mugs of really hot water from the coffee brewer and drop them off. When their food comes out, I notice these ladies made instant mashed potatoes in a coffee mug. Who does that? Story 18. I worked at a Korean restaurant. Two ladies came at lunchtime and repeatedly requested Korean bread as I was taking their order. Having puzzled for like 10 minds, I took a really wild guess based on what they told me and guessed it right. They thought I was a complete idiot for working at a Korean restaurant and don't know what Korean bread was and complained to my manager what a poor waiter I was. Korean bread was tofu. To this day, I don't even know how the two was in any way related. My manager heard my story, and it's now a laughing joke in the kitchen in front of house to call tofu bread. Edit, I cannot English. Story 19. Not ridiculous, but fun. I worked in a restaurant in Hawaii 25 years ago, and we would get groups of Japanese businessmen that didn't speak much English. After struggling through a few tables that had trouble with our rather large menu, even when they had a host trying to interpret for them, and after being stiffed several times by these groups, not leaving a tip, not because they were rude, just because it wasn't their custom, I asked my manager if I could try a different approach. The next 10 top I received, I approached with a pre-planned meal. Who would like the John Wayne special, I would ask. They nodded approvingly at his name, wanting to have a good old John Wayne American experience. I told them it consisted of a large steak, backed potato salad, dessert, and beers. I also mentioned that I would be adding a 15% tip on the bill in order to cover the service they would receive. The host always seemed appreciative of my approach as it made their evening much easier. In addition, this made it simple on our kitchen, our bartender, and on me and the bussers. We always gave them a dinner to remember and I never had any complaints. Story 20. A very large couple walked into my burger joint. The gentleman went over to me at the grill and asked me if we used butter in the grill. I told him that no, I don't personally, but the breakfast crew often does. He informed me that he and his wife were on a diet and they could have no butter. I told him the best I could do was scrape the grill where I'd cook his burgers, which was satisfactory. Their ticket came through a few moments later, and as I was playing their meal, the gentleman also told me that his diet required he not even look at a pickle. Fine, it's easy to leave something off. So I took to this strictly dieting couple each a plate with two double cheeseburgers, chili cheese fries, hold pickles, scrape grill. Because, you know, diet, story 21. I had a lady tell me it was impossible to make the dish too spicy. When I told the cooks, they took it as a personal challenge. I don't remember what they put in it, but I do know that someone ran to a grocery store for another ingredient. It was literally the spiciest thing I have ever smelled. Just being an arm's length away from it for 30 seconds while I delivered it had me coughing and treats steaming down my face. Guests at nearby tables complained about the smell. Just so much capsaicin in the air that people 15 feet away were uncomfortable. But she ate everything. She ate every single bite and then scraped up the remaining sauce and ate that too. Edit. Obligatory holy cow thanks for the gold. Edit 2. I know that I said treats steaming down my face, but I'm not correcting it. You will just have to deal with my autocorrect just like I do. Story 22. Former cook here. Not proud of this one. So I worked at this pizza place, very well known and respected in the city. Fantastic pizza. I was always the guy not bothered to go the extra mile for special request. Guy orders a vegetarian pizza, tomatoes, pineapple, peppers, mushroom, onion. The works. Calls back about 20 minutes later and complains the pizza is too soggy. I think I gave him 50% off his next order or something like that. Calls back next week and orders the same thing. This time, I made sure to soak up any extra liquid on the pizza and toasted up the crust a little more. Calls back 20 minutes later and complains. No worries, discount for next order. Calls back the next week and orders. This time, I pre-cooked the vegetables, dried them out on paper towel, and blasted them with some more heat before putting them on the pizza. Calls back 20 minutes later and complains. Too soggy. Same deal, discounted his pizza. Calls back next week and orders. I'm done this time. When his pizza comes out of the oven, I walk over to the tap and soak the pizza with water, to the point the bottom of the box is dripping. Never heard back from him. Story 23. Two stories, one funny, one not. Good story. Worked at a yacht club, which was essentially a mediocre restaurant attached to the community we lived in with docks out back for boats. Not a snobby I own a mansion and yacht club. Anyways, we all like to have fun in the kitchen. Getting to the point here, we had a new menu item in the salad section without a name, so my buddy, who was into Counter-Strike Source pretty hard in the 2005, Six Era decided we call it the noob salad. Head chef asked what that meant, didn't care, and used it. A week or two later, a waitress we liked came back and told us she heard an old couple discussing what they were going to get that evening, and their husband was looking at this particular item. He says to his wife, I think I'm going to get the noob salad. To which his wife responded, it's pronounced noobe, we lost our cow. That was kind of off topic, but I was hoping at least one person would like it. Worst orders are always paired with the worst customers. 
such as the woman who faked an allergic reaction to hot sauce on wings one time because she touched her daughter's wings with her finger and tapped her tongue with said finger to try them. Her husband said, and I quote, you allergified my wife. They tried to sue our poor chain restaurant. It did not work. Another story from the same poor restaurant was a couple of lovely people who wanted to split a burger, half well done, half med rare. Nope, fudge you, that's my input. These are the reasons I'm going to college to make sure I don't have to work at bad restaurants again. Story 24, this is my thread. I don't care if this gets buried. I love this story. I used to work at Olive Garden. At Olive Garden, there's a dish called the five cheese marinara. You know, essentially a plate loaded up with cheesy magic with a little bit of pasta thrown in. One day, a stupid man with his stupid wife come in and the man says, I want the five cheese marinara, but I don't like cheese. I look him dead in the eye and say, then don't order that. You're not going to like it. Instead of being a sane, rational person, the man says, oh, can't you just have them take some of the cheese off? Again, I repeat, you will not like this. It's almost all cheese. But he insists. I just accept it, curse this stupid man, ring the dish in, and immediately run to the kitchen. I let the kitchen and my manager know that he's going to send it back. Of course, my manager is the nicest man in the entire world and refunds his entire meal and brings him a new one once he, unsurprisingly, sent it back because it was too cheesy. He left me four cents as a tip. Stupid, unpleasant person. Story 25. Not a waiter, but when I was a kid, my little brother hated cheese but loved pizza. He was only four or five at the time and didn't fully grasp the concept of pizza yet, so when we ordered a pizza, my dad would always have to order a plain pizza. One time we were at a pizza hut and my dad ordered a plain pizza and the waiter responded, okay, so a large cheese pizza. My brother immediately started crying, so my dad started winking at the waiter going, no, a large plain pizza. Evidently, there was a breakdown in communication between my dad and the waiter, and we ended up getting a circle of dough covered in sauce. Edit. My dad is catching a lot of flack. Rest assured, when we got home, he put my brother in a burlap bag and beat him with reeds, which was standard protocol for situations such as this. Story 26. Worked at Red Lobster, we had three frequent customers with specific needs that we always catered to. The lemon man. Always wanted a bowl full of lemons. Normally, we don't give people multiple lemons because they just use it to make lemonade. This guy used lemons on everything from his biscuits to desert. No garlic lady. Always wanted the cheese biscuits without the garlic butter coating on top. We would make a whole batch just for her. Crispy biscuits. This lady wanted her biscuits extra crispy or she'd turn them away. Only a few people were ever able to make them to her satisfaction on the first try, and you prayed to God they were working that day if she walked in. All three of these customers were of the elderly kind and tipped extremely well. Can't say there was any, how did you deal with this, other than just doing it. Never understood why the managers let this be a thing. Story 27. Vegetarians who eat seafood and vegans who eat eggs are as far as it usually goes. But the worst I had was vegans who were allergic to nuts and gluten-free. We have a seven-page menu, and all they could have was one of our salads. They had a full-on argument with me and the manager that we should have a menu with more variety. If your dietary requirements are that specific, you should really call ahead or plan better. Edit. Totally meant seafood, not stray food. And we do have a lot of vegetarian, vegan, and gluten-free options on our menu. But with my main gripe, it was significantly harder. Also worth pointing out, we are a Spanish tapas restaurant, so all servings are not main meal size servings. Also, I do know that vegetarians who eat seafood are called pescetarians, and I understand why. That's why it wasn't a massive gripe of mine. It can just get tricky when we have a 10-course banquet and someone who couldn't eat fish, as far as we know actually can, and ends up taking a serving of fish instead of the vegetarian meal we prepared them. Story 28. Two. Come to mind one. I had to wear glasses for a couple of weeks from a hit I took to my eye. One top I was serving asked if he could use my glasses to eat because he had a hard time seeing. I said no because I'm using it for medical reasons. He then starts flipping a cow about how the customer gets what he wants. I waved my manager over and she pretty much heard the whole thing and her response was priceless. Sir, I understand that you have bad eyesight and this unfortunate, but he needs those glasses. Besides, would you ask to borrow someone's underwear if you weren't wearing a pair? Glasses are the underwear for the face, he apologized, too. This woman saw that we had ahi tuna, also known as yellowfin tuna, and rice. She demanded we make sushi. I told her that's not on our menu. She said she heard the table over got a request they asked for that's not on the menu. That request at the next table was to use unmarinated chicken. Just regular seasoned chicken, no problem. She ranted that we were discriminating her. Strange hearing that coming out of a white person's mouth. I get fed up, told my manager and chef. They both are about to bleed out their ears on how dumb this is. Chef cut the tuna and just pressed the rice together. It just looks like flat slices of tuna just topped with rice and nothing else with it. It brought to the table and she says, you didn't even try. Where's the seaweed, cucumber, avocado, and wasabi? Are you trying to get me to walk out? My manager just stares for a second and says, 
Yes. Because sushi is not on our menu. This is a steakhouse, and we serve American-style dishes. This lady had the gall to say, You all are bigots. You ruined my dinner, and I'm reporting your whole staff. Fast forward a week or two. The GM mentions that a woman called and mentioned we were being bigots and discriminating her and treated her unfairly. We let out a huge laugh. GM looks confused, and we explain what happened. The GM starts laughing his peach off and says, What a crazy lady, blah, blah, blah. This woman comes in later that night demanding I be fired for how I treated her. My manager tells her to leave or we're calling the police. She storms out to the entrance and starts screaming that this is a restaurant. How we promote white power, remember that this crazy is white, and don't care about our guest and how we're turning back time. A huge crowd is just staring at her with WTF, is this bad person talking about faces? She was really trying to start a rally and take this place back for the people. WTF? Shortly after the police arrive and the next day we all get free, Dope as fudge, steak dinners because we handled it so well. Story 29. A little late to the party, but I used to work at Starbucks. I was in the back working on the order and someone called me to the drive-thru. They said there was an upset customer. This lady was asking for an Americano with room for cream and fill it to the top. I asked her if she wanted us to add the cream for her. She said no, she wanted room so she could add her own cream. I tried explaining to her that she could either get a drink with room for cream or filled to the top, but not both. She started cussing me out and calling me names. So I kicked her out of the drive-thru and told her I would call the cops if she came back. She came back the next day and complained to the manager, and my manager kicked her out. This woman eventually got banned from every Starbucks in town. Story 30. I worked at a coffee shop, and a girl ordered a hot cocoa. We have milk, dark or white chocolate, so I asked her which she would like. It was a very standard question that we asked everyone. Then this happened. None of those, I just want Oreos on top. Girl, oh, um, do you just want warm milk with whipped cream and Oreos? Me disgusted look and tons of sass. No, I want hot chocolate with whipped cream and Oreos on top. Girl. Okay, great. So for us to make hot chocolate, we melt these little chocolate chips into milk. We have milk chocolate, dark chocolate, and white chocolate chips. Which would you like us to use? Me. No. You don't get it. I want hot chocolate with whipped cream and Oreos on top. I don't want those chocolate chips. Girl, I just gave up trying and used milk chocolate. She was at least 15, too. Seriously, kid. Uh, story 31. I worked at an upscale place that was across the street from the hotel of a golf resort. It was the only decent place in the area, so we'd often see the same people for three or four days in a row. This one guy kept coming in for lunch and ordered a hamburger while he sat at the bar. The only odd part of it was he wanted an extra large slice of onion. After the third or fourth day in a row of, it was good yesterday, but he wants it even bigger this time, I thought I'd be a smartass and peeled a whole onion and chopped off the top and bottom so it wouldn't roll around. I knew it was going to come back, so I cut another solid 1.5-inch slice to replace it. But it didn't. The guy ate the whole thing, told the bartender it was perfect, and gave us both a big tip. Story 32. When I worked at Olive Garden, I once had a lady order a pasta dish that is generally made with rigatoni. However, she requested the rigatoni be substituted with angel hair pasta instead, because she was allergic to it. And let me clarify, it was not a gluten-free wheat substitution. It was regular pasta. Naturally, I gave her a very confused look as I waited for something else to follow. But nope. She stuck with that story. I'm now concerned that there is some monster of a doctor out there pronouncing people allergic to cylinders. God knows what other shapes people are now living in fear of. Story 33. Many years ago, I delivered pizza, first on a moped, then my car. We had a couple of repeat customers who were obvious. They would order a ton of pizza, pay in cash, and say very little. I got a delivery to a house in a pretty bad part of town. I was unaware as to how bad it was, but I should have figured it when the other drivers nixed on the job. I loaded up something like 20 pizzas into my car and drove to the address using a crudely drawn map with various landmarks one of the cooks had drawn for me. The house looked like something out of a gangster movie. The front had three dudes waiting outside who stared right at me. Nonetheless, despite the ramshackle demeanor of the place, there was a brand new BMW convertible parked outside and music blaring from inside. I pulled up, opened my car door, and immediately the three hoods just walked straight up to the car, opening my doors and taking the pizza. I was worried I was going to either get stiffed for the money or my car jacked. Put it this way, I was a fat white guy in a pizza delivery cap with three tough old men staring at me like I was dirt. They take the pizza into the house, leaving the door open. I walked up to the door after a few seconds when nobody reappeared. I looked inside. The only thing I saw a girl topless on the sofa doing a line of cola off a tray. I decided maybe I shouldn't go in. After a few seconds, some dude came to the door, handed me some folded up money. There was way too much. I was just about to count it, and he says, Hey, there's an extra 50 pounds for you if you go get me some sushi. I looked confused and said, Didn't you just order pizza? He says, There's no way I'm eating that cow. Flipping mad cow's disease, greasy cow. Knowing what I know now, I saw what he meant, but of course this is 17-year-old John Six. 
I'm fat and have no idea what sushi is. I go to the Japanese takeout place he told me to. I'd passed this place all my life and never once realized it was a Japanese restaurant. I go in to make the order doing my best to recount exactly what the guy told me. It's a Japanese guy behind the counter. After a few items, he just says, Is this for a dress? I say yes, and he just said, Don't worry, I know his order. He gave me the food. I said, How much? And he just waved me off. No money. I came back to the house. Same three guys outside, but I have this big brown bag of Japanese food. I start walking towards the door, three guys eyeballing me. One of them knocks on the door for me. Guy comes to the door, looks really happy. He hands me more money, and I get the fudge out of there. Back at the pizza place, I'm doing up the bill. I'm counting out the money. It worked out to be about a 60 pounds tip, but sadly, we all share in. I got to around 130 pounds, take the next knot off, and the 10 pounds note is just covered in blood. I don't mean smeared. These are spatters, proper flipping spatters. I put it down separate to the rest. I keep counting. Next three notes, fine. Next note, more blood spatter with a couple of drips. Two of my colleagues are with me, and we're just looking at the money thinking, wherever these notes came from, somebody got messed up up. Two nights later, I'm on my shift again. Same address, even bigger order, but with an additional request. Send the fat white dude. He knows what to pick up on the way. TLDR. Candy Gangster demands me to pick up Japanese food for him on my pizza route. He gives me money with blood spatters on it. Epilogue. I did the delivery for the address, I would guess, ten times in total. Even once as a tip, he handed me a bag of candy. Of course, I don't do sweets and had no idea what to do with it. One of the other delivery drivers was more than happy to take this off my hands, though. I have no idea why. Suddenly, the orders stopped coming. No idea why. I can only assume they got busted. Story 34. This family walked into my restaurant once. Wealthy older man, trophy wife, and their teenage son. The wife's breasts were giant, distracting. Everyone in the restaurant was very aware of them. I go to their table and the husband orders the fried chicken platter, but only wanted chicken ball. I never had anyone order just the ball before, so I ran back into the kitchen and checked with the cooks. They gave me the green light, and I returned to his table with the good news. Good news, we can make it. But instead of giving you a bunch of small pieces of fried chicken, we are just going to give you the two biggest breasts we can find. He responds with, don't worry, hun. I'm used to paying for the two biggest so breasts I can find. High five. So we high fived. His son was not amused. Story 35. Brian Baby slash Birdman Williams used to come into a restaurant where I worked. He wouldn't look at the menu and would just demand stuff. The problem was we were a chain restaurant, Bennigan's. I mean, we could usually work with him and figure out how to charge him. Anyway, one day he was particularly difficult. He was demanding stuff we straight up didn't have. The waitress actually asked him, who do you think you are? He laughed and held up his cash money records medallion. The waitress, without missing a beat, read it out loud slowly. Cash, money, records, never heard of it. Is that like no limit or something? I know no limit. At the time, cash money and no limit were rivals, and he actually got pissed off. It was the last time he came in unless he came again after I no longer worked there. Story 36. Had my own restaurant. A client asked for a bottle of wine. I served it. Point two minutes later, client called me at his table and with a schmuck face telling me that the wine had a cork taint, trying to impress the people at his table that he knows wine and that he wasn't going to pay for that bottle, demanding another bottle. I had to explain to him that that was impossible because that South African red wine had no cork but a screw cap. Had a table of eight clients. They called in a week before they came over to eat, talking about the dishes they wanted. The woman on the phone says she was lactose intolerant, and it was very important there was no cream or dairy products in her meal. So I made my chef prepare her a nice three-course meal without any of those products that took much more time because it wasn't on the menu and everybody else took the same food. She was very grateful. Then I noticed that after her dessert, she ordered her second Irish coffee. Story 37. When I worked at McDonald's, I had a customer come in who said, I would simply like the dollar sandwich. This was back when the dollar menu had more than just the grilled onion cheddar actually for a dollar. So I said, okay, so which of our dollar sandwiches would you like? No, he replied. I simply want the dollar sandwich. Okay, I said, trying to maintain my cool. We have three sandwiches on our dollar menu. We have the McChicken, the McDouble, and the grilled onion cheddar burger. Which of those would you like? I would simply like the dollar sandwich. Okay, do you want a chicken sandwich or a beef sandwich? Yes. Which one? I would simply like the dollar sandwich. It took about five minutes to figure out he wanted eight McChickens. Another time, I had a lady come in and order a fudge sundae. Fudge sundaes from McDonald's are the easiest thing on the menu to make. Ice cream in a cup with one pump of fudge on top. I did so and handed it to her. Um, what the hell is that? A fudge sundae? She disgustedly put it on the counter. No, it most certainly is not. It looks nothing like the picture on the menu. Remake it. I remade it six times. Each time she sent it back and wouldn't tell me what was wrong with it other than it didn't look like the picture on the menu. Eventually, she explained to me she sent it back each time because the little swirl at the top wasn't perfect enough. She ended it with every fast food worker's favorite phrase, 
Seriously. How hard is your job? Eventually, I made the swirliest swirl that I've ever seen, and she finally shut the fudge up and took it with a sneer. Story 38. So I worked in a pizza place for seven years. Now, this wasn't like a Pizza Hut or Domino's. This was a local European pizza place. It was in a small town, and I've still never had better pizza. All of our pizzas were 13 inches and piled with toppings and a thick crust. I'm six tall and 200 pounds, and in my teens, I could barely finish one myself. So one day, we get a call, and the guy asks for a large pepperoni pizza for delivery. Now, as I said, we only one size, and we don't deliver. But being fair to this guy, these are some fairly odd things for a pizza place to do. I responded with, well, sir, we actually only have one size. It's a 13 inches, and it's about a medium at common pizza places. We also don't deliver. He responds with, oh, that makes sense. What is your largest size then? It's 13. That's our only size that we make. Oh, great. I'll take a large 13 inches for delivery. At this point, I was dumbfounded. This conversation went on for five minutes with me trying to tell him we don't have a large and only that one size. His main responses were, well, can you do a 13 inches in a large? Or what's your largest size? Also, the whole time he would think he understands it and then would ask for delivery. It was like something in his brain made him think either we had one size and delivered or we didn't deliver and had multiple size. And for some reason, only one of those was true. This was also a very busy night, so I was at the end of my rope here and told him, sir, we have one size, that is it. We won't deliver. We can make you a 13 inches pepperoni pizza and you can come and pick it up. To which he says, all right, I think you finally get what I want now, so you'll make me a large pepperoni pizza and bring it up here. Also, I want some Cinestics like Domino's makes. Me address is 14, and that's where I hung up. In my entire serving career, he's the only customer I have ever hung up on or just refused to serve. I've had people tell me he was obviously flipping with me, but doing that for so long, I know when people are trying to be funny or prank calling. This guy was dead flipping serious. Edit, sweet Jesus, gold. Story 39. First job as a server was at a Cracker Barrel. Lady orders a burger. I want the lettuce, tomato, cheese, and pickles all on separate plates, and if I see any pink, any pink, it's going back. I tell her I can give her one big plate, as there wouldn't be enough room for that, but she insists. Bring her the burger as per request. As I am setting the plates down, the lettuce leaf bumps into the bun. She instantly demands me to take everything back, even the things that didn't touch, and replace it all, including the burger, since it was apparently pink. My manager sees me doing this, and instead of following her ridiculous request, he simply picks up the burger with his bare hands, nukes it for a few minutes in the microwave. It looked so warped, rubs the lettuce and tomato and pickles all over it and tells me to send everything back as before. She seemed as satisfied as she was going to allow herself to be. Story 40. Not a ridiculous order, but there was this couple coming in with their dog, a golden retriever. The dog was all, throw a ball, please, please, damn it, throw a flipping ball. So the couple asked one of our waiters to play with the dog as long as they are here to eat. They gave him 50 euro, so he didn't complain, but the couple took their time and drank about three bottles of wine. I'm pretty sure they had alcohol before they even came in, so they were pretty drunk after two hours. The dog was tired and laid down under the table when the woman decided she wasn't able to make it to the toilet. So she just let go and peed on the floor and the sleeping dog. Never experienced anything like this before or after. Story 41. Once a mom, mid-30s, came in with her two kids. There were four elder people at one table. It was two old couples eating, enjoying their night. The mom comes into the restaurant and goes up to their table and says, hey, this is my table. I had this specific one reserved. Uh, not true. They said, sorry, we are eating. And we told her we can sit her anywhere else as long as it's not taken. To be clear, that wasn't the table she reserved. So she goes and grabs a big glass of water and runs up and throws it in the old people's face. The whole restaurant pauses for a second, and the old man, probably 75, gets up and pushes her to the ground. The mom's husband comes running in and starts screaming, swearing, and then the police came and arrested the old man for assault. That's the craziest story I got from working in the food business, LOL. It was just sad and absolutely nonsense because that woman started it by throwing water in their faces and was a total unpleasant screaming at them. Old man is a boss. Sorry, this is actually off topic to this thread, but it just reminded me of this and I had to tell the story. Story 42. Not ridiculous in that it was rude, but in sheer complexity. I had a family come in, mother and father, daughter at maybe 15, younger son around 11. The boy clearly suffered from a developmental disorder of some kind. He had very poor social skills and seemed to rely on stimulation in the form of iPad games. I've seen kids that just don't want to do anything other than play on an iPad. He wasn't one of those. Really sweet family. In any case, they tell me right off the bat that their son can't have gluten, dairy, soy, and has a peanut allergy. I did my best to accommodate them. They weren't demanding in any way. I informed my manager that we'd have to make some odd changes to a few menu items, mostly in how they were prepared, to work for the kid. My manager was fine with it, but we still thought, maybe you shouldn't just go to any restaurant you find and see what they can do if your kid can barely eat anything. 
They ended up ordering a grilled chicken entree that costs around $16 and includes a honey Dijon sauce, sautéed spinach, and homestyle potato wedges. The Dijon contained dairy, so we nixed that. The potato wedges were cooked in a fryer that also handled food items containing gluten, so we nixed those, and the kid didn't like spinach, so we axed that. The kitchen made him hash browns instead of the potatoes, but the hash browns had to be cooked in a skillet without any oil or anything because the cooking oil we use contains soy. And I got him some steamed vegetables in lieu of spinach, despite the kitchen not having a truly proper method for steaming vegetables. In the end, the kid was happy and the family grateful, and they tipped me well. Other actual ridiculousness was a woman that wanted a heavily loaded burger that had fried onion strings on it, but wanted a gluten-free bun instead of the brioche. Thinking she had a gluten allergy, I informed her that the fried onion strings were not gluten-free. She laughed and said, no, that's fine. I don't have a gluten allergy. I'm just trying to eat better. Can I add bacon to the burger? Story 43. I worked at Five Guys last year before grad school. Someone came in and ordered a quadruple patty cheeseburger with as much cheese as I thought was appropriate. We were really busy, so I took his order and was running grill. I told him the challenge was on. I had probably 20, 30 burgers on the grill, but I made sure I cooked his to perfection. I put mayo, a leaf of lettuce, two tomatoes, four pickles, ketchup, mustard, grilled onions, mushrooms on it. Each patty had a slice of cheese between it with two slices on top. It took three people and two sheets of aluminum foil to put it all together. I watched the guy eat it from behind the glass. He was in ecstasy. I went back to the grill, and about 20 minutes later, one of my coworkers told me someone was looking for me. I went out, and the guy said it was the best, oh, no thing he'd ever eaten, and he wanted to thank me. He gave me $15 bucks, manliest moment of my life.